Hello, everybody. Back today with my sisters on the battlefield. Literally, my galactic sisters on the battlefield, Taylor and Stephanie. And my, oh my, what a month it's been, ladies. Like, this has been just, I mean, I don't know whether to call it a shit show or like the greatest story ever told. Like, or both. Maybe it's both. I don't know. Both. Yeah. Both. Oh. <laughs> so I'm writing have- a book on this one day, definitely. Oh. Oh, yeah. And I know you guys, and I said this in my last follow-up video to the first video we did together, with, which thank you guys. That Those videos are going out like crazy. I'm sh- I, I typically don't watch the numbers on, on shows I do. I just kind of put my stuff out there and that's it. I always feel like the right people are going to see it. But those videos are getting like really pushed out. But we know that where we are on the internet is the actual battlefield. <laughs> right now so um it doesn't surprise me because obviously we have the help from our galactic family and um yeah which we will definitely have to talk more about one day when we're able to because that has been probably one of the most exciting and um surprising elements of this full great awakening that i personally have experienced is starting to have that inner type of uh, relationship with um the off-worlders and how powerful they are. And so, um, but we'll get more into that after, after the battle is done, because as we know, we are in a battle, so we can't say everything up front and out front and, and in the open. But one thing we wanted to really focus on today, guys, and, and I know that I've gotten a lot of emails and a lot of comments regarding who this, um, what entity is. And we're not going to say who it is right now, guys, for lots of reasons. Um, it's just not appropriate right now to say it on, on the platform. And we are in the middle of a legitimate WAR. And so we have to be very careful and very strategic about things. But the one thing that's bothered me the most um, personally is because I kind of want to be like, you guys, the whole point of the great awakening is trusting your gut. You don't need us to tell you who it is. You literally don't need us to tell you who it is. You will know who it is by your gut reaction to this particular person. Um, so let's get into that, ladies. Let's talk about this whole, we've heard this so many times during this great awakening, right? Like your gut, trust your gut, trust your gut, trust your gut. But then we also want to have like confirmation from another person, but we don't need that, do we? No, no. Yeah, the inner knowing is so strong. And, and, and that's the thing is like a lot of you guys, since you guys were children, since you guys woke up, whatever that may be for you, we call it the compass of the heart center. You probably instantly had these feelings of being like attracted to someone or drawn away from someone. And that's how we want you guys to start navigating too, is by that compass of the heart center. Does this feel good? It doesn't even have to be a person. It could be what you're doing too. Does this feel good? Does this not feel good? And we're going to call it, or instead of listening for truth, because people can say really beautiful things, we're going to call it feeling for truth. The feeling for truth, trusting your gut, your heart center, and your intuition. It's just a different way of being, but you guys have always done it, right? Yeah. And we get that, you know, and I I think that from a very, you know, I've said this before with kids and with animals, they know, kids Mm -hmm. and animals know, but over time, it even, you know, even occurred to me like this year, actually, because we even have funny pictures of like my niece sitting on Santa's lap and screaming and crying. But, but they're telling you they don't want to sit on that person's lap. Right. And we, we, we learn to like kind of strip people of having that faith in, in what they know and hear. And I love how you say that, like leaning on your feelings and not on words, because people, people can speak real pretty to you. They can speak real pretty. That's spell casting. Hello. <laughs> they can speak real pretty to you. But your gut always knows. And that's where we get this idea of cognitive dissonance, which is a lot of people, even in the normal society, understand what cognitive dissonance is, is when you're hearing one thing, seeing and feeling another, but you believe what you're hearing, you're believing the lie over what you actually know to be the truth. We see this a lot with CULTs, you know, we, I know, sorry guys, you know, we're still under censorship, so we have to watch certain words, but, um, but let's, let's, uh, let's talk about that more too, because people do often will second guess themselves for what somebody says to them right? Which spellcasting is a form of manipulation. And that manipulation comes through mostly through words. Mm -hmm. You know? And I'll reiterate too, I talked about this on our last week's video. For me, when I saw this particular entity, I literally got nauseous, sick to my stomach. Um, I felt like a gut punch. I had a literal like physical reaction to it. 
Yeah. It wasn't in, in this person. Well, first of all, I did not see what was so special about this person. Um, must have been some spell casting she was putting on the audience. But, um, you know, when people talk nicely to you, they can sweet talk you that, like you said, it's spell casting. But how does it feel? What are the How do the words feel physically, mentally, emotionally? How does it feel? And does their face match what they're saying? Does their body language? I mean, these are all things we learn throughout our lives is you can tell when someone's genuinely happy or when someone's also not genuinely happy or being genuine as well. Energy doesn't lie. No, when they're faking it, you can tell right away. It's like people always say that a used car salesman is the best actor ever, but he's not because you know he's acting. Yeah. He's lying. That's good. You know that, right? Right. Well, it's also, so what do we see a lot with like spell casting or even just dealing with the narcissist? We see what we call um, love bombing. That's an actual term. And it's, it's, it's a term of manipulation. And so if you meet somebody in your life and they just are constantly lionizing you and putting you on a pedestal, like you can do no wrong. That's a form of love bombing. And that's a form of spell casting and manipulation. What they're doing is putting you under their control. Because now you become their source of, um, or they become your source of validation, right? And I know so many people who've gotten into relationships, including myself, that started off with love bombing. And after the relationship is over, they know they knew when they first were getting love bombed that something wasn't right. right. Something wasn't right. We also see with manipulation that there is this tactic called a mirroring. Mm -hmm. Now, there are things that now kids do mirror. So when a child is growing up, they learn to mirror things from their parents and their siblings. That's part of development. So they learn things. But and there, there could be when you meet friends, this can happen with friends or a boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever, you're obviously going to have a lot in common. There's obviously going to be a lot of things that you have in common. But with mirroring, when that person tries to put themselves in your direct eyesight with no one else where they're completely mimicking you to the point where you think you've met your other half, that's not, that's manipulation. You know, even if you do have your other half, your twin flame, there's still going to be some differences between you two and a healthy relationship should not have to worry about the fact that you might like to drink, drink rum or they might like to drink whiskey. Something as minor as that. You know what I'm saying? So that in itself is, a, this is all part, and this is literally, even though we're talking about psychological stuff, this is literally all part of spell casting right. and putting someone under their spell. Well, what happens after the love bombing, when they've got you where they want you, then comes the degradation. They pull it's you. like a hook, them. isn't it? It's like, that's how you hook them in. And then they have power over you. And remember, like, nobody should have power over you. No one should. Ever. And the biggest way to take your power back, and this took a lot of us as empaths, and I'm sure a lot of people are empaths, and, and you know, we feel this feeling that we have to give and give and give and give because we're emotional and, and we feel like that's what we're supposed to do. Well, yeah, we are supposed to give and be service to others, but we have to be so full that we're not draining our energy. And I always say this to people, the biggest form of self-care, the biggest form of taking your power back is saying no to people, places, and things that do not serve you. And it's not an equal exchange of energy at all. You're drained. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also, you know, I was thinking about this too, like in a healthy dynamic. Now I'm sure that you guys all have friends. Like we pretty much have a text chain go. The three of us have a text chain. That's pretty much nonstop going. My best friend's the same way. Like there are people you're constantly chatting with all day, but if, if one of you were to like stop responding for a couple of hours, that's fine. You're probably doing something right. Like normal people. Always me. <laughs> well, yeah, I go to You're busy. I'm like, guys, and I'm like putting my phone. I'm like, they're gonna have so much fun without me. Like <laughs> <laughs> FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> um, but you know, with manipulative people, with people who are spellcasting, they're not gonna give you time to settle into your own feelings. So, like, if you meet someone and you have initial feelings about them, you're going to be able in, an, in a healthy environment to step away from that and settle into your feelings. But if someone is trying to manipulate you and spell, they're not going to give you that time. They're going to put you in a, pla a place of confusion so that you're not actually aware. And, and I know that narcissists themselves have a way of manipulating your gut feelings too. That's why it's important to be able to have a sense of like boundaries and a sense to be able, and normal healthy people aren't, are going to respect those boundaries. And if you say, I had to, hey, I got to go home for but they're gonna be like, that's cool. Talk to you soon, you know, and let you have that time. And I love how you talked about the sense of self as well, because I know that with a lot of like, um, 
Now, of course, the entity we're dealing with is, um, we're not even sure if it's human. So um, this applies to mostly humans. Um, when you don't have a sense of self, <laughs> you have nothing to fall back into, like a sense of who you are, a sense of self. You will try to then take that essence from mm -hmm. other people. And that's what narcissists do. That's why they love bomb. That's why they hook people. That's why they feed, literally feed off people. And if you've ever been in a relationship with a narcissist, it's like one of the worst experiences of your life. Um, and then when you can't make them happy, when they, when they are done getting their narc supply or their sense of self from you, then that's when they start degrading you. Because all of a sudden now you've made them feel worthless because they didn't have a sense of self anyway. And even though that's dealing with just the human kind, um, we can kind of see that in a greater extent with like spell casting. As I said, we've now learned stealing natal charts apparently is quite common when it comes to black magic. Not until recently myself. Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, how many number, how many people do we believe have had their natal chart stolen in this whole, what number did we get? I think it was like 34. So I'm one of 34 people who's had their natal chart manipulated. And we know of a few other multiple others. people multiple that are people. involved. Yeah. This is bigger than just me. So now obviously a normal everyday human is not even probably going to even know what a natal chart is or know what the Akashic records are. So we're definitely talking about some high ranking black magic um dark cult members now a normal person's never going to want to do that anyway mess with somebody no matter no matter how mad at you are at someone you're never going to want to go and like mess with their akashic <laughs> record i think most of us understand that those are sacred you know you don't mess with that so um i mean wild right wild um so so we know that this is a lot bigger and that but if you think about the idea of the sense of self and i think i said this uh in our last episode the reason why this entity and the legion, because we keep getting it's a legion. Yes. My, my situation is just one of many. It's a micro to a macro of what's happening in this battle on planet Earth right now. Um, because they are not um, of the light, they don't have a sense of self. Yeah. They don't have a, pers a human personality. And so they have no choice. If they want to work their magic... They have no choice than to take the essence of somebody else. And they are smart enough to then plot and plan on the battlefield of who they're going to attack because of the domino eff effect it has with other people as well. Mm -hmm. And can we explain that a little bit to people, like how our souls are so intertwined with each other, like how our natal charts kind of intertwine and our Akashic records kind of intertwine together? Because I know people have kind of asked me about that. Do you ladies have a way of explaining that, like how soul families work? That's a complicated question. <laughs> I just, I think it's like, and I agree. I think that's a very complicated question, but I also think it's just like remembering of how many lives you've probably lived and how much you've been through and remembering. So like, for example, if you look at how many times you've incarnated on earth or off earth, depending on who the person is, remember that you have soul families with each of these collectives. So not only are you just having soul families over here, you also have them over here. So it's almost like every one of us is connected to each other in some sort of way. Remembering, of course, that's unity consciousness too. We're all connected to source, but also remembering that like, we are so intertwined with everyone's information, everyone's stuff. And that's why we can feel it so much too. And that's why you're drawn to people or you're could also be karma while you're not drawn to people. But at the end of the day, there's a difference because with the spell casting and with a narcissist, I was thinking about this whenever we're talking about source. So all of us get all of our energy straight from source, straight from God creator, straight to source. And that's how we get our information. There's extensions of that in different realms and levels that we can tap into with our soul families. But at the end of the day, these, these beings, they don't have an energy source. So they used someone else as an energy source. But if we go back to narcissism, it's actually very similar because they're using your energy and your emotions as their energy source versus source itself. And I believe narcissists can probably connect to source if they need to. There's always redemption and learning and, and going through that. But at the end of the day, if you're getting your energy from anything other than source and other people, then that's leechy. That's, that's a very leechy parasitic thing. And that's why we're talking about the spell casting too, because they're literally taking someone's energy and life force in order to get the spell cast going too, and to bind people. And there's a lot of interconnectedness, like Bryce was saying too, we are so connected, so connected. And you feel it like you, you actually feel it when somebody that you, and it's wild. We were just actually talking about this because and I actually talk, spoke with Tamara this morning. We were going to film, but we're going to put it off for next week because we had some stuff to talk about regarding this issue because of what's going on. But um, 
we are so connected to each other. And in this lifetime, we're now meeting these people, these soul families, like later in our lives. And even though there are people we're connecting with in this battle, and I'm sure the people watching have experienced as well that we haven't known as long as other people in our lives, we feel more comfortable and more connected to, I mean, I think the first time we guys zoomed together, I was like folding my, I, I almost went folding my laundry last night too, but I was like folding my underwear in front of you ladies. And I was like, Hey, what's up? You know, like, good to see you. Like I fold my bra, you know, and that's but that you just have that inner knowing that, you know, you know, these people, like you've, you've done this with, we, we, this is not our first rodeo. You know, we, we, we've done this together and we trust each other. Like there's a deep inner trust. And so what starts to happen is when you, I know, I think it's in Chinese culture. They talk about these like tentacles Mm -hmm. where you have this like tentacle attached to people that you are connected to on a very deep spiritual level. And so you think about that when somebody that you are that connected to is going through hell because of spell casting, you actually feel it too. Mm -hmm you feel it as well. I just saw an infinity symbol. So yeah, I would say that the interconnectedness of the energy, yeah, yeah, it would totally go both ways with that exchange of the cord. Remember we have negative cords, but we also have cords to people that we we love and we care about. And that's, that's cool. I didn't know about, about Chinese culture, but that makes sense because it looks like a cord to me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's how, you know, you think about it. We we call it telepathy. We call it, you know, psychic intuitive knowing, but you think about have you ever like been driving even before, or, you know, I guess long before there were cell phones, like at home and, you know, you were like thinking about someone else in the phone rings and they're calling you. Yeah. Well, that would be, could be just described between that energetic core that you have with that person. It's like how parents like know something's wrong with their child. We call that motherly instinct or fatherly instinct, but it's actually the cord that's telling them something's wrong with their kid, right. you know, or something, you know, it's, it's that and how, and that's, and that's actually, yeah, you're right. There are negative cords, but they're also very positive ones very, very positive ones. Um, and, and that is why this makes it so complicated. And that's also why we can't go into too much detail about the person or what's happening because there are people involved that we really genuinely love who are part of our soul family that are victims of this, you know, even though we might not be too happy with what's happening and, and the behavior because of this, we still are fighting for them as we would would hope our family would fight for us as well if we were in this position too and, and have that compassion to understand that that they are in a sp- place of total i mean that's what we keep getting right total confusion total and, and we're seeing their bodies deteriorate as well just like mine was deteriorating um we're seeing it physically take take its toll on these people but we know that they're going to be okay we know it's going to be okay and we know that you know the devil tried to play us in this battle but God is actually playing the devil at his own game right now because mm-hmm. God used the situation to help some of us wake up. And I think he's still going to continue to use this situation to help other people wake up as to who they really are in the day. And this is one thing I've said before, and I, and I've said this privately, but I'm actually going to say it publicly. Now I am not a fan, even though I've laughed about the movie myself, this is all a movie. This is all a movie. And we've used that as a way to describe what's going on because of censorship. Mm-hmm it kind of makes me a little bit when people continue to say, this is all a movie. This is all move. This is all movie because yes, it is, but we're also in the middle of the biggest W a R we've mm-hmm. ever been in. And when we think that this is all just, you know, the white, the good guys doing what they have to do to wake people up, we drop our guard mm-hmm. and we stop, we lose that sense of spiritual discernment. And, um, I think that the, what we're living through right now is a good example of that happening of losing spiritual discern- discernment. Cause maybe the guard was dropped a little bit. And when it comes to spiritual warfare, like you have going back to that feeling, you have to f- trust yourself. You, and I had the same reaction Stephanie did when I first saw the thumbnail of this person come up, which we know her thumbnail is not actually the person, which is wild. Like it doesn't look anything like the person 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 we can but it's still the energy behind it before i even knew that this was the person using my needle that i didn't even know at this point my needle chart was being used um i got that same feeling of i have to throw up like it was a visceral it wasn't just like oh i don't like this person it was a visceral i have to go throw up now and we've gotten so many people have told us that that they had the same reaction to that so imagine having that strong of a reaction and then be being gaslit and told you're wrong yeah you still have to trust yourself. And sometimes that means walking away from the person that's telling you you're wrong because you have to trust yourself to thine own self be true. You know, 
So, I mean, I know I've had those situations where I will get a bad instinct about a person, but then I will be tricked into like believing them and thought, I mean, have you guys have that before? All the time. I've yeah. dealt with that my entire <laughs> life. Like, um, I've had so many like gut feelings about something. And then like, it, it might be some, but like, um, when I was in the medical field, I might be a, like a patient I had that feeling about, or one of the nurses or one of the medical assistants would say to me, Oh no, no, that person's harmless. Like there was a particular priest that I used to have to room and he gave me the creeps. And he said something to me when he found out I was getting married that I, I couldn't get out of the room quick enough. Like when he found that I was engaged, he goes, Oh, so Stephanie, does your husband know about us? And I'm like, what are you, what? What? Oh, oh, he's harmless. Really? Because to me, that doesn't seem harmless. That mm -hmm. pervy. That's very pervy. Um, and so I've had those moments. And then, and then I try to convince myself, oh, no, it's just harmless, just harmless. And then down the road, I find out, no, that person is not harmless. That person is uh, a perv or yeah. Uh, a pedo, you know? Yeah. It's funny. The other day we were um, just zooming privately, the three of us, and I pulled up my old high school that I went to. Oh, yeah. And um, there ha it's funny because I went to a very a private school. It was a boarding school. And um, there were, if you look at it, you look at pictures of it, it definitely screams um, the bad guys, basically. Mm -hmm. And I had asked, I, I there were some faculty members at the school that I never liked as a kid, like never liked them. And I pulled them up and we looked at them and sure enough, we got that place had to surrender that it is, it is part of it, you know, and those people are, you know, it's just, so you never, you, you, you always, even when you're a child, you always trust that gut instinct. That is God talking to you. That is your protection. Um, that is, that is absolutely how many people have said like, Oh, I, I knew all along or like, Oh man, I should have listened. I, I knew, you know, I mean, Taylor, I'm sure you've had it before because you've done a lot of work with people, like with the hands-on with people and stuff. Haven't you? Yeah. Well, I was, it's funny when Steph was talking, talking about it. Yeah. Mine was always people, but it was also like, I knew when I shouldn't take a patient to like, I, I, I was laser hair removal. So I was a little different in the medical aesthetic, uh, aesthetics industry, but I would do laser hair removal and I'd be doing it all day. And I'd be like, I really need a break. This person's really draining me. I would tell that to my boss. I'd be super transparent. And I remember I had trauma from this for a while because this is a repeat cycle in my life where someone, Oh, you're just being too sensitive. You're too sensitive. No, my intuition's on point. My gut's on point, And that's what it is. But I didn't know that at the time. So you're like, I'm just too sensitive. And you start to believe those things about yourself. And those are not things that you should believe about yourself. You're not too sensitive. You're intuitive. And you know how exciting is that, that your body, your gut, and your feelings, your emotions, they all tell you this bigger story of what's good for you and what's not good for you. Right? Yeah. There's a warning, warning, warning. Yeah. You know, and it's true. Like I, I remember like somebody saying with, um, even with love relationships that we have been taught that in order for us to be in like a good relationship, there has to be passion and drama and arguing and all this stuff. And someone was like, no, oh, if that's what you're feeling, that's not a good relationship. <laughs> a good relationship should be very even keeled. You know, you should not have to, you know, but, but we see the, the movies, we see the stories. And so we, we get ourselves in these situations where we're not listening to what our gut is telling us about situations. And so I really want to just like, I, if I could, shake everybody watching be like trust yourself trust yourself i don't want to be your guru i know taylor doesn't want to be your guru stephanie doesn't want to be your guru we want to be your your sisters trust yourself listen to what your intuition is telling you and from the from the first what is it they say like you make up your first impression on someone like the first minute of meeting them you've already got like your first impression of them yeah so that means your your personal spidey senses are going off right away People right. have um, auras around them too. People mm -hmm. have vibrational frequencies that you can feel physically, mentally, and spiritually. The other thing I want to bring up too is this kind of goes along with the lines of um, mm -hmm. relationships that are narcissistic, um, but probably fit into this as well is, you know, somebody might come off and sweet talk you and, and be all nice and then, uh, then they'll mistreat you. But then you have this um, period, which is called the honeymoon period of the cycle where, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, and then they're, they're pouring their love out to you. They're pouring their heart out to you. And they make 
feel like, you know, it, it, it's okay. And it's, it's just you, you know, and, and then the gaslighting then starts, oh, well, they try to manipulate you thinking that they were wrong. Like it's this whole like cycle and you can actually Google narcissistic relationship cycle and actually see like a picture of the cycle. Yeah. Which is very much as as, ter- as uh, Taylor said, it's very much like spellcasting. What they do is spellcasting. So, I mean, bottom of this, bo- the bottom line is: don't listen to words, listen to feelings, and and also know what you're worthy of. I think it took us all a long time to feel like we were worthy, and there's still times that we all are going to struggle with that. There's times that we look at ourselves and we're like, "Well, I expect this for myself, or my mom expected this for me, or someone expected this for me." But at the end of the day, like you're worthy. You're worthy of being free. Worthy of being loved. You're worthy of all these things. But the hardest thing to learn is how. Like I always tell people this, like go look in the mirror and tell yourself how amazing you are. And you'll find that it is hard as shit. Like the first time you look at yourself in the mirror and you try and say those things to yourself, it's hard to believe it. So I say, if you can't love yourself fully, start nurturing yourself fully and then shift yourself into that love vibration. And then you're able to be able to deal with what's going on out there as well. But like, I don't know. I know that. I know that that's hard because you feel like you owe people things, right? Like we get in this blood is thicker than water thing. I owe my mom this. I owe my children this. I owe, but no, you don't owe anyone anything. Half of these relationships you incarnated into, there's a reason they don't feel like your soul family. It's because you have lessons to learn, karma to get rid of. And and sometimes they're meant to trigger you to shake and wake you and make you realize how wonderful, big, bold, and beautiful you actually are too. Right. 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 That's, um, yeah, absolutely. And that we actually just shot a video with Catherine Edwards this morning and, um, Mornay and Shanti and Cindy about Saturnalian festival, which what we're in right now is Christmas and how Saturn has been manipulated, but Saturn was always meant to be the, the, the shaker up that to to bring you some hard truths about yourself, the tough love planet. And of course they inverted it, but we're going to bring it back to that. It's sometimes you have to go through the dark night of the soul you know, in order to, to learn how, how incredible you are. So yes, yeah, some of those karmic relationships are just that. And let's, let's talk about, cause I do want to pull some cards, but you know, when we talk about people, this whole idea of like soulmates versus twin flames versus all this kind of, can we kind of give a broad definition of who, of what, like what's a soulmate, a soul family? What can we tell the audience about those dynamic relationships? Yeah. <laughs> well, well guess, this is all your thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I guess for me, like it's remembering too that like like I said before, like Bryce was explaining, like there are so many intertwined connections. You probably have a lot of soulmates. You have a lot of soulmates. You have a lot of soul family, but you also, for me, a twin flame experience is a very high experience. It doesn't make you better than anyone. All of us are equal, but if you do have a twin flame, normally what it is, is two full aspects of one experience. So both of these coming together to bring in their experiences together. Well, twin flame units, unions, they can be romantic. Absolutely. There are going to be romantic um twin flames that are drawn to each other but sometimes twin flames are just going to work together energetically and coming in together for experience and we're coming into this huge time and i'll tell this from a bqh sessions i've been having for the past week i've noticed a pattern all of these people are coming into union with people that are like them and it's about to become physical and we're already starting to notice that calling it the great gathering like stephanie was calling it all of us are going to come physical together but on top of it too i've noticed that there is a huge surprise like some people their akash does not want to let them know what's about to come for them we had a window open and this beam of light come in for this uh this gal and they were like, close the curtains on her. They didn't want her to see. And she's like, why can't I see it? Why can't I see it? And it's like, the surprise is so big. And I know that sounds cheesy. And I know everyone's really tired. Like, I bet a hundred of us are like, well, where is the surprise? Well, it's coming, I promise. And, and the fact that my BQH sessions are doing this pattern, it's telling me a huge thing's coming for everyone. Everyone. And it's, I love, it's interesting because Stephanie and I had talked about this before because we had noticed this that we're all being rearranged right now. Everybody's being like rearranged right now. We're noticing that dynamics and relationships we thought were one thing are changing to another thing. Um, and we're all being, and, and I think a lot of people are actually finding their twin flame. I think, and I, and that's part of what this coven is doing is that they are dividing. They're trying to divide that because when you come together, there's power, there's power. There's a reason why this entity did not want Stephanie Taylor and me to work together. There's a reason. Yeah. We don't quite know what that is yet, but they know we don't. And it's funny because throughout this whole thing, 
Stephanie, I keep asking Taylor, well, who are we? Like, why, why are we, I thought we were just cheerleaders on the sideline. Like now someone's got my needle chart. Like what the hell is going on? And Taylor just laughs and said, they keep telling me don't ruin the surprise. Don't ruin the surprise. Yeah. And it's never been like that. I've never, <laughs> I, I hate to be like this guy, but like my information, it doesn't come in like that. Okay. So the fact that I'm getting this all around with a lot of people, it's so much bigger. Like, of course, we're sitting here and experiencing this, but it's so much bigger. And I know Bryce and uh, Stephanie, all your guys' audience too. And I've, I've seen some of the comments. I try not to get too attached or anything, but I do see them. And I know for a fact that people are experiencing very similar things to what you guys are experiencing. And it's so so important that people know that this is okay and that you're not doing anything wrong. And from a galactic standpoint too, I just want to affirm for you guys, like, yes, like dumbs are getting like almost done. Like they're done. And from what I see, they look done to me, but we have to also remember there's still players on the earth and we forgot we, it's almost like not all of us, but you know, we sometimes forget that the WAR is now physical in their inner physical realm. But from a galactic standpoint, we knew this all along that we would have to put our swords up for the final battle. And it was about us, all of us banding together. And the coolest thing about this is everyone's starting to band together. Yes. yes. <laughs> Cause that's kind of what I was thinking about this whole, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. Yeah. Yes. We know yes. that astrologically, we know that we're going to win. Like we know that. And we know, yeah. and I will tell you, I've been like almost, I went from being like, to the point where I thought I was going to like lose my life to being absolutely jovial because I now feel, I, I was just telling them, like, I feel so protected. Like I feel my guides around me all the time. Even when I'm going to the bathroom, I'm like, you guys really need to be in here for this. <laughs> but I still feel them. And, and that was that this whole situation kind of opened that door for me to actually understand how protected we are. But but I think it's because we are now realizing that we are the storm. As we said in the first video, we are the battle. This is not just about Mr. T. This is not just about the Alliance. We are part of that. We just don't remember. We, we volunteered as tribute. <laughs> no, all right, I, we, we literally, <laughs> said, I will do this. <laughs> so, here we are. And now we've got to do this. And, um, I know you said something Taylor once that got me kind of emotional that, that they wanted to thank us mm. for doing this. There's, there's like this, I know, like I just saw nine of wands in my head. I know guys, like, I know how everyone's feeling. I really, really do. Nine of wands is the one where he has an eye patch on him and he's exhausted. I totally get it guys. I totally get it. But it's also this celebration is coming. The great gathering is coming. Unity is coming. Like I can feel it in my bones. And when we look at times we get, we freak out because I, I know I've been through this. Like I'll start to feel something or predict something. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's coming. And then all of a sudden I'm like, it went by. And then you get to that like down stage where you're like, well, am I just crazy? Am I just wrong? Just remember that when you guys are getting visions and information and stuff, time is not linear in the quantum. I know everyone knows this, but, and I know it sucks. Like, trust me, I want to date too. I want to know exactly win but i'm telling you guys we're in a portal we're going through the gate it is almost like the fruition is going to come and i think you guys would agree with me if the fruition doesn't come like in the near future like people are going to be very 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 tired and yes. very done like even more than i know a lot of people already are i don't mean it that way but yeah I, that's what i keep saying too there's only you know even though most of us are learning that we're not fully like we we, we are star seeds we we do carry the essence of um a galactic nature, but we're in a human body and human bodies do get tired. Human spirits get tired. Human minds get tired. Yes. And I do believe that, um, we are at the end as well. And, and I know, I, I think there is going to come a point, you know, we see these like memes of like activation with the red, the red eyes. I think there's going to come a point where we all just kind of like activate. And I think that, you know, when something so drastic happens, you run the risk of traumatizing somebody. Cause again, we're in a human body, we're in a human brain. And so I do understand that the powers that be um, on world and off world had to let this unfold in a particular way so that we, we would be ready. We would, and we were, we were laughing about like, you know, white, white magic for dummies. And like, <laughs> you know, like we've never like, in this life, we've never done anything like this. It's not like we had a training day. We were just thrown in, you know, but, but the more we get thrown in, the more I realize like, oh, we've done this before. Yeah. We have had a training day. We have, and we got God on our side. We got light in us and that light can create. 
And, and I'm going to say this, we all, I don't think any of us really knew how evil the devil was until we entered this time, how bad, bad truly was. And I'm going to tell you something, Satan's not going to leave. He's not going to bow out gracefully. No. He's not going to be like, oh, my time is done. Shucks. I just saw explosions. I was like, please, no. <laughs> I, he's not. Well, maybe that's the people that are going to be, you know. Well, and, and also, I think that could just be them throwing, like, trying to throw a bunch of distortion, seven of cups everywhere, too. Like, they can look here, look, you know, that's what we've been going through for the past two years. It's, oh, look over here, look over here. That could also be that what that symbolizes, just saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not. And we know we know we got a legion on our hands right now. That is the realization <laughs> we have made is that we're up against the legion right now of people that are like tentacles tied to what we think might be the same entity. Um, we don't know. We just kind of know what we know and we just go with what we do know. And that might, you know, but, um, but at the end of the day, in order to spiritually protect yourself, you got to trust your gut because God is talking to you. That's your source creator. That's the person that that's the same source. Trust your gut. Your friend didn't create you. Your partner didn't create you. Your, the YouTuber you watched didn't create you. God did. So listen to that gut. And if you're confused about a situation, if you're feeling that discombobulation, step back, step back from it and let it settle so that you know exactly how you feel. Again, no one's got to point things out to you. You are, I believe that every person watching right now is smart enough and is intuitive enough to be able to know exactly who and what we're talking about. All right. And if you don't know yet, maybe you haven't run across it yet. And that's great. Awesome. <laughs> for you. you know, and just keep and understand that this is not this, this, this battle is not over. And so you have to, if you were on a battlefield right now, you would not just be standing around eating popcorn, just willy nilly. You would be guard. You would have your armor on. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that. The armor, put it armoring up, right. Yeah. Putting that light around you. Um, Cause it is coming to the physical plane. This, this battle that has been going on all over the galaxy is now coming to the physical plane. I know the Cassiopeians that Todd follows the off-worlders that have a forum, they talk about how they've been like excitedly watching earth. Mm -hmm. the, it's the, <laughs> the Palladians, um, the woman who channels the Palladians, they have to tell you that they've been excitingly watching, watching earth. And I'm going to say what they said in one of their channelings. I'm going to have to bleep myself and put the words up guys. And you'll know why we have, well, they, they have the Palladians told the channeler they have. Yeah. That's how big this is. And they're it's watching like, us. Yeah. Whenever you look at it from like a higher perspective standpoint, it's affecting every planet in the universe. Like Mars getting liberated, the moon getting liberated too. There's a lot of liberation energy that's around us. And Earth is Earth is really dense. So just remember that too. When you volunteer to drop in here, you volunteered for a really big task. So you're not doing anything wrong. And I noticed another pattern in my readings and my sessions was the cosmic womb. This feeling of like, I don't know which direction to go. Hanged man in the tarot. It's a perfect example of it too. Right before you're about to jump through your birth portal. I know this all sounds cheesy when I talk about the wombs and the portals and stuff, but it's a really good way to vision it. Think about being in a womb. What do you do when you're in a womb? Well, you take care of yourself. You trust yourself you allow the energy to come into you instead of external and trying to and that doesn't mean don't do anything but what can you do that brings you joy or what can you do to help do you feel like you can put armor around yourself or your grid and the earth like there's so many things you could do that resonate within your heart center within you but i always say when you're in that cosmic womb what can you do to take care of yourself one but two know that right before you jump through your portal you always like want to jump away from it or like and you don't know you're blindfolded until you can completely go through but you guys are blindfolded for a reason right now it is not that you are doing anything wrong i do yeah. just want to affirm that we've gotten that a lot that we're all that all of us in another words are cloaked like we don't oh, have to go through and that's for our best that's for what our safety and also for our own mental clarity to slowly start to reveal things that we're breaking a lot of patterns and a lot of stuff we've, we we now know our history is completely wrong we know the earth is not what we thought it was i mean that's a lot to take in you know, that's a lot of thought patterning to, ch to have to, to have to change. And so you have to remember that God is loving. The Palladians are loving. They're not going to just be like surprise in a bad way, right? It's going to be like surprise in a good way, right? <laughs> so, so trick ya. No, they're not going to do that, you know? So, so we just, and, and we, and, and, you know, we, we know that 
I mean, think about it this way, guys. And I, and I hate to be like, I kind of hate to be this way, a little snarky, but like half of the human population does, doesn't even realize what's going on right now. I don't understand that. We are carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders right now because we are the ones that are aware and are fully activated in this battle. And so we have each other though. You guys all have each other. We have each other because we are on the same team. Now, unfortunately, our side of the battle has been infiltrated, but we are aware of that. Some of us are aware of that. And, and the galactics are aware of that. God is aware of that. And we will end up using this infiltration to our betterment because that's what God does. Because that's how clever and powerful the light is, is it's not, it's like, it's like, don't worry about it. I got it. I got God this. <laughs> well, the thing too is like, do you really think God is surprised that it even happened? No. Number one, he allowed it. Number two, he already knew it was going to happen. And if you're so, going through what I'm going through, if you're one of the people, just know that, yeah, God is allowing this to happen for a reason. And you got this. Yeah. Sometimes you don't know how strong you are until you have to be strong. That's one thing my yoga practice taught me for years. I've said this before. My teacher, you know, in Ashtanga yoga, we put our legs behind our head. We catch our ankles. I mean, hyper mobility, hyper, but that's, but my teacher never talks about getting more flexible ever. He always tells you to get stronger. So you're in a handstand, holding a handstand. He's telling you to get stronger. And you're sitting there going like, how much stronger do I have to get? But it's always get stronger, get stronger, get stronger. There's always that sense of getting stronger. And the more you, the, the, and I said this at the end of my last catch up video that I had said a while ago that when lockdown first started, I had this intense desire to start like strength training to do other things besides Ashtanga. So I started really working on my strength and I was under the impression that it was because I was preparing my body to go through the transference of the density of the earth. And that's what I was doing. That, that's why I was getting this message to do this. And for two, almost two years now, I've been doing strength training on top of, on top of my yoga. Um, but through this battle, I realized it was kind of like, I was like, that strength training was for this. That strength training is what got your body through this, this battle you're facing with this entity. That's why I told you to do that because this, I knew this was coming. And so again, that's a following your intuition and my intuition. I was being told to do this. It was nagging at me, do this, do this, do this. I didn't know why I thought it was just because we're going to be, you know, I, I was all hippy dippy about it. I was like, we're going to go into fourth density and fifth dimension. And <laughs> yeah. oh, hell no, it wasn't for the light and love. It was for the darkness that I had to get strong, you know? So, so yeah, this is the, to follow that gut. But ladies, I know we only have like 20 or so minutes left because Stephanie has to jump on the dark outpost. Do y'all want to pull some cards? Sure. <laughs> what do you guys want, think we should pull cards on? What do, what do you feel like? Okay, so what do you feel like the collective would want to know? Like, as we talk about either the dark magic or we talk about intuition or we talk about the womb, what do you guys feel like the collective would want to know? In this let's the first question, let's show what that, let's see what the, what the spirit, what the cosmos and the Pleiadians will tell us about the surprise to come. <laughs> what <laughs> tell us? Price. You wish. <laughs> I wish, right? Is that what they're saying? Well, ha ha. <laughs> She's nosy. <laughs> she is nosy. I'm like, guys, I think I've earned it. Come on. <laughs> Tell me. Let me know the secret. If I get the sun card, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go run away. <laughs> I swear. I'll be like, bye, guys. <laughs> or maybe like, oh, you know what? Just look what I just pulled. Stop. I gotta go. <laughs> I, split my, I split my deck. Look at how red I am. I'm like, <laughs> I, I split my deck at the pool in the sun. Oh yeah. So that goes back to that come to the edge zero point energy. We were talking about what is your joy and that goes full circle to your intuition versus what feels good and what doesn't. So we're actually getting a full circle and the sun can be abundance in the tarot too, guys. So this could be what you've been waiting for as well. I get the justice card. Ooh. Two of cups. So two of cups um, could be people coming together, in my opinion, sometimes, because this is like a friendship card, um, yes. people meeting each other. Um, I also have the Wheel of Fortune and the Strength <sighs> card. So I, I feel like this is saying that maybe many of us will meet each other in, in the actual flesh soon. That's what I feel too. I've been feeling that so significantly that like there will actually be like communities of like-minded people. And I don't know how that looks guys. Like, I don't think, I don't think they'll even let us know how that looks, yeah. but all I know is that the financial strain or debt 
what they were telling me pretty much was like, I don't need to worry about how it happens. Like it will happen. Hold on to that knowing, but let go of how, because that's, that's when we have expectations and things like that, that we, we need to release at this time. An expectation is the thief of joy. So true. I just had a, something pop up over there. Hey guys, how are you? Yep. Okay. So we got a queen of wands energy, which is following your intuition, your gut. This always reminds me of Bryce. Sorry. In a, oh, a well aspected queen of wands. She's very, very intuitive. Um, but look at the sunflower right there. Whenever you're talking about that, that could be abundance, but it also, whenever we get yellow, it's also your power, taking back your power, taking back your knowing she's very passionate. And guys, we're about to literally level up. Look at him looking at the world. And this, uh, this next step for him is always higher up. So that is your next step going through the portal. But the best part about it is you're walking away from the things that don't serve you. You're like, these swords don't serve me anymore. These humans don't serve me anymore. So this would be the five of uh, swords, but it's walking away from the people, places, and things that do not feel good. And guess what, guys? Mother Earth is assisting. We have so much assistance from the angelic realm, the galactic realm. We have Mother Earth as well. But we're going to have a great, great healing come across. Like I almost like, I'm sure, Steph, you probably had this vision too. Yours was purple. Well, mine was like a tsunami of energy too. So I'm sure we have mirroring visions of what's coming. But remember that this energy is coming from all aspects. But it's like Mother Earth wants to take her, like when I'm divine feminines coming together too. But sorry, I channel really fast. But um, Mother Earth wants to take her turn too. That's what I'm getting. And let's clarify, not the distorted divine feminine, which is what this, this is. This is the real lady. <laughs> the real divine feminine, which is female and has stayed a female. As female and has stayed a female, yes. <laughs> I'm just putting it literal. I'm a very little actually was born in a fem female's body on in it through the mother's womb. No yes. distortion. Yeah. And we're not bashing anybody who's open about it. It's when you're faking. Yeah. Distortion. Yeah. Distortion. Distortion and Distortion. tricks, just like going back to the black magic, which Yeah, that's that's that card for that entity. Yep. And that entity likes to wear red, we've now noticed. So, oh, yeah, that's interesting too. Yeah, there's a bigger one, one, one. There's a bigger, um, there's a bigger story to all of this, of course, where, you know, Bryce is living this out personally, Stephanie being her friend and me now eventually like watching, but there's like bigger, bigger stuff to this. But guys, look at that. At the end of it, we walk through our portal. We get to celebrate together. This is literally like a celebration card too. So just know this is what's waiting for us. And guys, like keep holding on to this vision, even when it feels like crap feel the crap. I'm not one of those people. I'm like, feel the shit, cry it out, whatever. I'm still going to say that. I'm going to say that forever, but like the one, hold one. on to this knowing. Yeah. One, one, one. As you say that. Ooh, we Evan. Yep. Yep. No, and I I love funny. I've gotten that too, because I, as you guys know, like as Taylor and Stephanie are friends of mine off camera as well. So we, we chit chat like friends. And I've said many times, like, I don't know like how I'm going to get through the hurt of being in this situation and I just keep getting, it'll be healed. It'll be healed. There's going to be healing. It'll be fine. Just trust, be where you are. Yeah. Be where you are right now in this, this, you know, state of, of, Oh crap, this is really real and it's happening, but there, there's going to be clarity there. We're going to get clarity. I think we're going to know everything. I think everything's going to be, be that what is done in the dark. We brought to the light. Right. I mean, is that in the I Bible? Know. something? I just got the sun will come out tomorrow, but I'm not Stephanie. I can't sing. So <laughs> you want to sing? You guys, you guys have not heard me sing yet. I have not been able to sing lately because I've been so congested. My has been really bad too. And sometimes I wonder if that's not, I mean, I know I, we, we film a lot, but I've been filming a lot for a long time, but I think, I think that um, we're getting attacked. I think that's another place where we're getting attacked is through our also ascension too. I think you can get it with ascension sickness as well. I think there's a mixture. Yeah, we're getting it from all, like, that's literally what I was seeing is all angles. And I do like to tell people to remember your ears, your throat chakra. And what that can mean is you have family starting to try connect with you to that coming online too. I know that sounds, but that's what I was supposed to say. So I'm just going to say it. I know that I had a weird dream. I've had three dreams yes. within the last, I think, month that a family member that has not talked to me in God knows how long that an immediate family member, um, and in my dream, I'm trying to talk to her and she just looks at me and won't talk back. It's really creepy. Like, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> I don't think she's trying to connect with me. I think I'm trying to connect with her and she's like, hell no. She's the crazy one. 
<laughs> do you have do you have like some stuff that happened with her whenever you started to learn truths? Was there anything like dramatic fallout with her or anything? That'll be off camera. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> <Heard. Yeah. laughs> Steph, do you oh, want yeah. to pull final cards for, I don't know, Bryce, what do you want to, what do you want to feel like the collective wants to know in this here now moment? Let's look at the beginning. Let's so, so we're moving into 2022, according to the matrix. We know that's not the year, but let's look at January. What do we give an overall feeling for January? Like for the, for like, so we're, are we checking like public collective or the collective of people that would be like watching, watching you? What, what do you guys think? What do you want to do? Public collective. Public collective, okay. like baseline public collective. Let's, just, let's see what the humans are feeling in January. I feel like I just got confusion. I'm sorry. I don't know if something's going to come out. I saw seven of cups in my head. I, I saw. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Okay. So that means something <laughs> might be breaking in January if they're confused. Okay. I'm, I'm still singing it, guys. All I want for Christmas is my EBS. Yes. Let's let's we need to sing it. I'm telling you. I've been saying it. We got justice coming in pretty fast. Like this could be like that timeline of like it needs to kind of happen in this here now, or else the timeline doesn't get perpetuated. I also think a lot of the humans, so we just got judgment with the three of swords. I don't want you guys to think you guys are gonna be through any more pain, but just be aware that people might choose to exit. People are going to be very confused. Everything's gonna be a lot because we're going into this like literally biblical time, right? Like this is this is where we get our actual peace not a thousand years of peace like that's what we're feeling we're feeling like this is actual time yeah yeah and let's maybe so let's for those who missed that we are now under the impression that our timeline is totally skewed and there is a possibility that the apocalypse already happened with the fall of atlantis which technically we're getting might have only been like a thousand years ago that's how messed up our timeline is um, and so we've already had the a thousand years of peace with the Christ consciousness. And then if you read revelation, the devil comes back for a short blip of time, um, which would have been the late 1700s, early 1800s. So now we are literally at the final battle is something is a theory that we've kind of been playing with. Maybe we can draw a card and see if we can verify if that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while she's doing that, I'm going to show you what I got on the question you asked about January. So I got temperance and death. So I'm trying to word this correctly. It says the end's not for everyone. And this kind of goes along with what Taylor said. And I'm not trying to scare anybody either. Um, but I've gotten downloads too that January might be an exit time for certain people. Um, that aren't ready to ascend. I normally don't read the death card as death itself. This could also be death of the ego, death of religion, death of the old ways, Your life, death of money, death of all the systems that are out of alignment with the earth. Right? Yeah, anything that is out of alignment with the vibrational frequencies as we it's go just, up in frequencies, yeah. it's an ending. Yeah. And I did tap into the um, Atlantis a thousand years ago and where we are in the Bible. Actually, I do believe that. I believe we're at the next step. But the magicians, whenever this is negatively aspected, I'm going to take it that way. The magicians or the dark cult are the people who were in charge of us for a long time, bigger entities above. Um, we're going to walk away from everything they told us. And we're going to have to start relearning our history. We're going to get more. I'm, so I just saw physical books. So those might be under the V. Um, we might actually have access to those and start collecting all of our information. I do feel like like intuitively too, but also knowingly, Bryce had collected a lot of information about that stuff for a reason. And I feel like there will be a time when the world is going to really have to know what happened. But also in our Akashas, we know like if you really tap in, like you know that they've been lying, right? Like it's it's an it's a known fact that they I was watching someone tour the Kennedy facility and they were all wearing these, which I'm all about free will. If you feel like wearing it, wear it, but don't don't make me wear it. Also, I don't think you should, but that's just my opinion. But at the end of the day, they were all wearing these and they were looking at this spaceship and they were like, Yeah, this has been uh 24 times out to space. And I looked at it, I go, that's a prop. It hasn't been to space. It hasn't even touched space. This isn't true. Yeah. This isn't what's happening. And it's just like the crumbling of like 
what did they tell us that's real? Well, at this point, we're going to have to relearn and walk away from all things they told us about money, about ourselves, about our histories. Like, I know it's eight cups, but this could go on forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, let's be real. Like there is like a firmament over our, whatever our planet is, isn't there? Yeah. Well, like, it's, it's like, a, I see it as being in like a snow globe. Well, and, and also there's like rumors and I don't know this guys, I haven't tapped into this, but I'll, sometimes when I hear these little things, I, some of them resonate, some of them I need to tap into, but like, what if the challenger hit the filament and that's what happened? I don't know. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know guys. I heard that that was a planned thing, by the way. I don't know. Wanted it to? I, mean, oh, God. I don't know either. I mean, we, I, we, I literally, I said on the video this morning, I did that. If you had told me five years ago that I would be questioning what our planet looked like and what the solar system looked like, I would have laughed and you told you were crazy. <laughs> but now at this point, I have no clue. And I'm comfortable with not having any clue what it is that we're standing on at this point. Well, you said this before, and I actually think you should reiterate this to everyone too. Like in my spiritual lessons, I'm sure Steph will agree with this too. Like my spiritual lessons, like the best thing I've ever learned is that I know nothing. I can tap into things, but I literally know nothing. And I know you said that about your teaching yoga to people too. There's a huge surrender in realizing I have to question everything. And that's discernment too. Yeah. That we Another say- per we say the easiest students to teach are the beginner students and the advanced students, because both the beginner and the advanced student know that they know nothing. Mm -hmm. It's the intermediate students that think that they know everything. Yeah. Another true. way to look at it too, is this is the way I look at um, not knowing anything. I find learning is so much more fun now. Yeah. The information. It's a lot more sense. No, I mean, right? history has never made sense to me. I could never I remember. remember. Yeah. And I like, I'll be honest, like I sucked at school. It never made any sense to me. Um, I used to hate researching things and now I love it. I, when I saw that picture of the, about, of North America, um, I'll see if I can find it and add it into the video here of North America, possibly being like Egypt, Israel, Assyria, like all these middle, what we think of the middle East actually being in the Americas. Like our geography is so off. When I first saw that, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like it's just something inside of me. Yeah. Like that makes a lot more sense than uh, maybe the cards. Cards on. Verify. I already pulled cards on that. You have. What did they say that that's correct? I got. I got that. That's very much correct. So we don't even know. Like, I mean, think about that. I was even saying like, ah, uh, so Yahshua's tomb we think is in the Middle East, but it's not. It's here. Uh, well, we did some research, me and me and one of my buddies, she's, she's great, but me and one of my buddies, we did some research on the Holy Grail too. And we found nine cups had been distorted and had little people's stuff inside the cups and they were drinking out of them to try and distort the divine. It was, and I know that's disgusting guys. I'm, but well, we have to face that. We have to face that because we picked up on that with these and these this legion as well that they're still doing these. Yeah, we think that in order to have their power still available because they're weak, guys. Like, there's a reason there's full blown attacks right now is because they're weak. We think for them to still have their powers that they're practicing still. Yeah, and that's Absolutely. disgusting, and it should not be allowed. And I declare that should not be allowed. <laughs> Me so too. It's very important to know that these entities were planning this for quite some time. Now we found out. Yeah. This, at least, uh, at least a year. That I've now was stalked for how long? I can't even remember now. How long was I stalked for? Year to eight months is what it looked like. But like you studied. I yeah. also feel like you'd always been kind of like watched though, like energetically in a protected way too. But yeah, yeah I don't, you might've had a target on you. Yeah, I, I know. And I accept that. But like I said, I feel very protected. So whatever happened was allowed to happen. I, I get that now for my for my own good. And I'm really actually like right now, even though I'm still very upset about the friendship situation um, and, and that human emotion, I still understand that this probably I'm going to look back and be like, that was one of the most that was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because it forced me. And that's one thing one of my friends said to me who did a healing session with me as well. She said, at the end of the day, what's going to piss this ent entity off the most is if you think it. Yeah. So you it yeah. You think it. It tried to kill you, but it actually woke you up. You and you didn't know that power was in you until you had to know that power was in you. Well, that's taking back your power too, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know, and I've gotten so many awesome emails. People, I know you guys have said, oh my God, I, that I look better. I look more alive. I look healthier and I, and I feel it. So 
I think that that is definitely, I think that was with Pleiadians too. Like, I think I definitely survived and, and learned from it. And, and, I, and I'm not, I mean, I'll keep learning, but I'll keep learning and it's not over. It's not over. You know, as we said, this, this thing is going to still continue to use my chart. Like it's not going to stop using my chart. Um, but I'm, but I'm still, but I'm not going to allow it to put me in the position it did. And I know my friend said after the Pleiadians took the, the tracker out of my neck, I had hooks in my armpits because they can't get trackers in me now. So they're trying to hook me, but she took those out as well. So, um, so bring it. We are the storm. Well, that's what I was literally about to say is we have the tower and we have the strength. Bada bing, bada boom. Don't be afraid of that tower. We need, we need that tower. I love the tower card. Need that tower. It's divine. That's why I like the tower is because whenever you see the lightning in the traditional tarot, it's always divine interventions. We have a huge divine cosmic plan. I mean, Steph even got the wheel of fortune, which is also what we've been seeing too. Oh, legacy. I've been getting this a lot. I wonder if everything is very temporary. It feels awful right now, but if this comes up, these girls can tell. This comes up with every spread I do with this subject. This they're, they're they've lost out on something. It feels terrible. It's scary, but it's temporary. Fives are temporary. And there we have that infinity symbol right there. Yeah. That you are talking about. Oh. Oh, justice. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to do our, <laughs> our dance. <laughs> like the, uh, you go to the car lot and you see the, the person like. Yeah, we we have, you know what? The devil doesn't know the sense of humor like we always talk about. So we got to have fun. Yeah. And, and that's energy too. Like that's alchemizing. We talked about this last time that laughing is literally the alchem like our trick of alchemization. So let's take what they've done to us. Be like, have gratitude, right? Exactly what Bryce said. Oh my gosh. And look at how strong you are. And then laugh and be like, well, what's coming next? Nothing can, you know, what's, what's coming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> what did we say? Uh, what did one of our friends say on Monday night? It is done. It is done. It is done. It's done. It's done. Doesn't mean the devil's gonna just bow out and say, "Okay, bye." No, <laughs> but it's it's my language is fucking done. Yeah, it's and a I really laugh in his face. I think they've only got a few weeks left. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, I don't know for sure, but if I had to guess, like maybe a few weeks before. And when when the tower falls, I think we're all gonna feel it. It's not. It's probably gonna be a little bit chaotic yes. for especially for the the normal humans. Yes. Um, because they're gonna be like, "What? <laughs> what do you mean?" Um, imagine? Can you imagine? No, but yes. Even some, tr even some truth or communities. I mean, a lot of them don't know the the mystical portion of this whole thing, the spiritual portion. They're they're very stuck in the literal facts. Yeah. When it's no, this is this whole thing is spiritual. Yeah, yeah, it's all spiritual because that is the truth of who we really are. We're spiritual, and it's it's, it's it's such a good point too because. It's like collecting all aspects of all information now. Like you can't just keep your, you got to look, you got to look, you got to feel, feel, go full circle back to what we're talking about. You got to feel through it at this point. Somebody makes you nauseous if somebody gives you that <laughs> awful feeling like, okay, nope. Just trust yourself. Trust no, it. no matter what the channel says about that person, no matter what somebody else says about that person, you trust you because yeah. God talks to you too. Mm. All right, let's end. What is that Bible verse from Esther, the book of Esther, that's so poignant for this time? Perhaps you were born for a time such as this. Boom. Excuse me. <laughs> we are the storm. Sorry, I got sassy there for a second. <laughs> you did. It was great. <laughs> Fine feminine right there. Um, so, guys, before we head out, I just want to let you guys know that I've talked to Stephanie and Taylor. And I know we talked about last time doing some call-in shows in the new year. So, what I'm going to do, I think the easiest thing to do, because I am not technologically savvy, um, is if I actually look at, like, StreamYard, which is another service that I can use where people – I can actually drop links into the chat – so people can actually come into the chat to ask a question. If we want to do some, some episodes where you guys can ask Stephanie and Taylor some questions, look at some card stuff, all that kind of stuff. So um, we're going to be looking at doing some more of those shows in the new year. Um, let me know your thoughts about that in the, in the, I was about to say in the opinion section below, in the comment section below, which kind of is the opinion section below. <laughs> let me know what you guys think about that.
Um, and I will definitely be putting uh, both Taylor and Stephanie's channel links down in the description box below. So please go and give them a subscribe. Again, I think for all of us, numbers don't matter to us. We're not, this isn't a popularity contest. It's not a competition. We're all literally on the same team and we are all literally walking each other home. The only thing about the subscription numbers is it does catch the algorithms, which will push out their videos more for more people to actually run across and see. And that's super important in this, in this battle that we get all, all the information out we can to those who need to see it. So we love all you guys very, very much. We hope that you all have a very merry, merry Christmas. Go laugh, go have fun, go joke around with your family, drink, eat great food, be merry. Literally, if you are able to go have a merry Christmas, that will piss the devil off the most. So go have fun. And, um, and yeah, we'll arrange something next week for you guys. So merry Christmas, guys. We will all talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.